Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2019 Toyota Prius, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Kurt trailer hitch receiver. But before we do that, let's check it out and make sure that this is something that's gonna work for you. We do get a lot of our uh, neighbors that own these Priuses asking how to uh, carry some extra things around. You know, there's not a ton of space inside of these cars. And so if you're someone that, you know, wants to take your bike out or maybe use a small cargo carrier uh, on, a, on a road trip or something like that. And a trailer hitch is almost a must have in my opinion. You know, this is gonna allow you to use that bike rack or that cargo carrier, keep everything out here and free up all that extra space on the inside of your vehicle. One thing I am happy to see is that the hitch is tucked up nice and tight against the bottom of our bumper. You know, the Prius doesn't sit super high off the ground and so ground clearance um, is something you definitely want to keep in mind and with it positioned all the way up like this um, we're definitely going to be able to maximize uh, that ground clearance and due to that as well you know the hitch is going to be for the most part completely hidden really the only thing you're going to be able to see is the receiver tube opening there uh, and so it really does have a clean factory type look and at least in my opinion, it does a great job of helping to maintain that streamlined hybrid electric car feel. But this being a class one hitch, it's gonna have that inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter receiver tube opening. And one thing I like about this one is the fact that here at the end, we have a reinforced collar. Not only does it add a little bit of strength, but honestly, I think it makes the hitch look better. You know, kind of has more of a complete uh, look to it. It is going to use the standard half inch pin and clip. Now keep in mind a pin and clip does not come included, but if you need one, you can grab it here at e-trailer. And we're gonna have loop style safety chain openings. And those are gonna provide us with enough space to use just about any size hook that we might have. As far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 200 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. And that's going to be the amount of weight that is pushing down on the hitch. So that's good for those one to two bike racks, just to kind of give you an example. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, that's going to be 2,000 pounds. And that's going to be the amount of weight that is pulling on the hitch. So that is the weight of your trailer, plus anything that you might have on it. I do always like to suggest, though, so never a bad idea just to grab your Prius's owner's manual. That way you can make sure your Toyota can pull up much weight safely. Now I'm going to give you a couple of measurements and you can use these to help figure out which hitch mounted accessories to get. From the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube opening, that's going to be about 14 inches. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, that's going to be about 3 inches. You can use that measurement to help figure out that if any fully accessories you might have can be stored in that upright position without contacting the bumper. But other than that, you know, when it comes down to it, a uh, hitch you really can't go wrong with, you know, not only is it going to look good, but it's going to help you uh, be able to get out there and have some fun. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's really not too bad. Um, nothing really complicated. There are a couple different types of fasteners that you may have to spend a little bit extra time on to get them figured out and, and get them released. But once you figure that part out, uh, I mean, it's pretty smooth sailing from there. So as long as you take your time, really shouldn't give you a whole lot of issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be working under the back of our Toyota here. And first thing that we need to do is remove some of the panels. Now yours may be set up a little bit different. I know in the past I've seen some that have panels here in the center. In our case, uh, we don't have that, but they're all gonna come out the same way more or less. We're just gonna start with the one here on the corner and it's gonna be held in place with several push pin type fasteners. So the fasteners we're gonna remove are gonna look just like this. And the way these work, you take a trim tool like this one here, or even a flat head screwdriver will do the trick. And you're just gonna pry underneath the head of the fastener. Then you're able to work the whole thing out. So simply just kind of work our way around. these fasteners removed. If they're really tight, it's, it's pretty normal. You know, a lot of dirt and gunk gets built up in them and makes it kind of tricky to get out sometimes, but no big deal. We'll just keep working at it.
if you kind of push up on your panels, um, that'll help you figure out which fasteners you need to remove. Kind of see which ones are holding it in. So it looks like we'll have this one up here we need to pull out, and that may be it for this panel over here. If you look way up here, kind of in the corner behind the panel, there's a different type of fastener. This one, you're simply just going to unscrew it. And sometimes if it doesn't come right off, you'll have to kind of grab it and uh, apply some downward pressure while you're unscrewing it. And once we get it to release, you can take our panel out and set it off to the side. Went ahead and removed this panel over here on the driver's side the exact same way as we did the other one. And then if we start to move towards the center of our vehicle, we're gonna have some uh, plastic fascia tabs also held in place by a push pin. So then pop that out. And if you follow it down, we'll have one more right there as well. Now on each corner of our vehicle, along this edge here, we're gonna have a few fasteners. Uh, the first one will be up here. You can see where the wiring comes up. There's a white fastener plugged into a plastic piece. And so we're just gonna take our trim tool. Just get underneath it and pop it out. And then this one here, we're gonna have a tab. And you'll push down on the tab and kind of pry out on the fastener. These are kind of tricky. Just because you don't have a ton of space keep working at it and so this is a fastener that popped out that's what I was pushing on there that center tab so when you're holding that down I'm gonna pull out on this and eventually it'll come free and what we're gonna do is just loosen up these corners here so pull down on it this one here, kind of push it on the center as well. Drop it down until you get to about this point. Once you're at this point, we do the same thing over on the other side of our vehicle. Now we can remove our bumper beam. So each side is going to be set up the same. In each corner here, there's going to be a bolt with a 12 millimeter head. The ones up top are a little, little tricky to see, but actually pretty easy to get your hand up there. There's quite a bit of room. So with that said, I will grab our socket and get these pulled out. I have the other side, all the hardware removed already. And what we're gonna try to do is sneak our bumper beam out from the bottom of our vehicle. So we'll just very carefully kind of work it out and set it off to the side for now. With the bumper beam out of the way, now we can actually completely remove this lower uh, panel here. So. Just like uh, many of the other types of fasteners, along this whole edge, all the way across, you're gonna have several different types. You know, you'll have some like this where your wiring's connected. And pry those up. And you're also gonna have 
some of those white sliding type fasteners as well. So just like we did before, we'll simply just work our way across that edge and get all these removed. Once you have the, all them clips and fasteners out, you can start to lower this. What you may have to do, you know, work your way along the edge and push in on those types of fasteners. And we'll just continue to do that until this drops down and we'll set it off to the side for now. Now we can move back here to our bumper beam and if you flip it over uh, where it goes flat up against the body of our vehicle, you can see that there's a tab sticking up there. Um, what we need to do is flatten this down. That way it don't interfere with the hitch. So um, go ahead, take a hammer and pretty straightforward here. We're just going to bend that nice and flat. And we're gonna do that to each side of our bumper beam. Now we can get our hitch up in position. And the way this is gonna work is you're gonna lay the hitch flat and then you're gonna take your bumper beam and lay it over it. And the bumper beam is gonna sandwich a hitch in between um, the body of your vehicle. So we're gonna raise this up as a whole assembly and then we're gonna secure it to the vehicle using the provided bolts. So now with the next set of hands, we'll take the hitch and our bumper beam there, hold everything in position and we'll take our bolts and get these started hand tight. Once you have all the hardware in place and hand tight, you can come back with a 13 millimeter socket and snug them all down. Now just kind of a forewarning, sometimes you know it can be tricky to get all these lined up and, and started. So if you're struggling with that a little bit, one thing you can do uh, let's say if you have these bottom two ones in, you know, you can snug these down, kind of help draw everything closer, try to get the top bolts lined up. Um, if, if it's still fighting you, you can loosen them up again a little bit and just kind of work everything right into position. So you might have to, you know, give this a little bit of effort or on the same note, you may get lucky and everything just kind of line right up. But with that said, we'll grab our socket and get everything snug down. Once the bolts are snug, you can come back with a torque wrench and tighten them down to the amount specified in the instructions. If you don't have a torque wrench, you can grab one here at E-Trailer or a lot of times your local auto parts stores will have one available to rent. Now what we can do is take our uh, panel here and get this reinstalled the opposite way that we removed it. Uh, just kind of a heads up, it is going to be extremely tight. So what I like to do is kind of just get it over the hitch and just do your best to kind of try to work everything into position. So we'll have to kind of finesse this in. But once you get it going, and get it started, it should make things a little bit easier. And now we can move back to our underbody panels, put those back up in position, and again, re-secure them the opposite way that we removed them. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Kurt trailer hitch receiver on our 2019 Toyota Prius.